Hello everyone, thanks very much for coming back to watch another video. Um, I'm having to sort of pump the videos out a bit at the moment because I've done a lot of fil filming recently and then uh, so I don't want to get behind with the filming. So, um, so this is a few quick rehousings because if I don't do these now, if you don't get to see these now, it won't make sense for the big plans I've got. Um, so I'm just going to do these rehousings in this video here and then in a couple of days you'll see a promo for a really big feeding video I've got planned. Okay, so now we have a celebrity spider. It's got a name, Limat, because it's Leah and Matt's love child from their offspring. Sarmapius cambridgei, my, my first and only Sarmapius. Kind of, so you see I've sort of made it like a, a shoot out of three bits of bark there. That's sort of inspired by uh, Gav Strantulas, he's just a bit of this. It's quite a bit of loose material down the bottom. Not that much substrate. I, there's enough for it to burrow, and there's a pointy thing here. There's an area down here I've, I've got with the idea if it just wants to go down and hide and burrow, it's got it down there, it can do that. Um, and, and there's bits of moss in there. And it's, obviously, that's a nice deep hole for it to go in. I know it's arboreal, but it might not be just yet. Anyway, let's see what Limat is like. Been feeding well and everything, looks good. So, there he is. Some unusual pets. Caught at the uh, Halloween show. So there he is. Let's see him. I don't know if I should get a photo now or, well, really, I need to get me. There's enough room for me to do this, isn't there, really? Which would be maybe a sensible option. That's not what I normally do. It's whether he is darting off down inside or not, or comes out. I don't know how fast these are meant to be. Oh, there he is. Look at those legs. Right, I'm going to stop there and get a photo because he could vanish. Well, he kind of decided to have enough of me taking photographs and started wandering back in. So come back out. Come on. I know the reputation of being fast, thank God. Oh, there we are. That's better. Right. I've got time to get this out without disturbing too much. I skipped Sarmapias, went straight to Pokies and then Tappies and Amazonias. <laughs> so, a, bit, a bit backwards really. That could be a better place for a photo actually. Let's try that now. And now we've got the uh, rather strangely named Chilobracus species. So I don't know what Chilobracus it is. So what I've done, I've made a burrow there. See down the side there, deep one. Under that piece of, uh, it is actually cork bark. I, don't, I very rarely use cork bark. Another one down here at the back. Put moisture down them. Now this has burrowed ever since I got it. Never been, I mean, I've seen it out of the burrow a few times, but generally speaking, it's down at the bottom, burrowed as deep as it can. So I've put what I consider to be about as much substrate as I can in there. Two and a half inches maybe, but for the size of spider, that's quite a lot. Obviously it'll be in here a little while. Anyway, the reason I don't know what Chilobracus it is is because that's what it said on the label. It said Chilobracus species. And, uh, it came in a gimp box, I think, in the spider shop. Now, I've already got a discless blue, which is, let's face it, probably what it is. But I, I really like that spider. I really would not mind if it's another just, you know, it'd be nice if it was something I haven't got, I admit, but I really wouldn't mind if it was another discless, because discless is really nice. So we're probably going to have to do a bit of digging to get to this thing. Let me eat like that. Just dragged it down there. Actually, I was going to get the spoon, but the spoon's a bit big for it. Oh, is that another solid piece there? Right. Where are you, Mr. Spider? Because these boxes dry out ever so fast. Probably made a bit of a mistake here. I should have spotted the spider before I started digging, shouldn't I? Yeah, I can see him. But I can see his bum now. Down here. Let me get that out of the way. So there he is. 
So he's got to come out of here. There he is. Oh, I thought he. Uh, yeah, he's he's a bit. He's bigger than he he looked when he was all scrunched up. But can you come into there? There he is. He's in. Not too bad. My discless was one of my worst rehousings ever. Ran off. Get him for a quick look. I'm sure there's no way of identifying a sling from this size. Is a yeah, he's got some stripes on his bum. It'd be really good if he was a Fimbri artist. That'd be amazing. I don't know. Anyway, hope he likes it in there. Maybe get a photo. Okay, so who's up for a bit of fun? So what I'm going to do is rehouse Chilabracus Huhani. Um, as you can see, it's made up with a lot of stuff, a lot of webbing anchors, you could say, across the top. It's actually a little bit of a burrow down there, just to start a burrow. Uh, there's ooh, an inch and a half, I suppose, something like that of the substrate there. It's actually, this is the main burrow I've made. So you can see it's quite big down there. And there's, the substrate's been warmed up and wetted down and everything earlier on today. And I like to give them like a bit of loose, there's quite a bit of sort of loose stuff in there. And the reason for that is I did a not a very unscientific survey of Huhani owners. And of the four people who I spoke to, I think one had one who'd made a burrow. Two had webbing, it was like surface webbers basically. And one had one who hadn't webbed or burrowed. Um, so, and then I've got I've got a bigger one, which we made a nice burrow for and a nice hide, and it completely ignored it, webbed it over, and webbed everything up just like a, I don't know, like an OBT or, well, it very very quickly, it webbed it much quicker than um, a green bottle blue or an OBT, but very similar, sort of like surface webber, I'd call them. I would call them fossorial. Um, and then this one, as you can see here. It's done the same thing, surface webbing. It, it never used a burrow, never tried or anything. Now, these are fun, obviously. Most of the rehousings you see of these, they go all over the place. This is a bit on the small side for a catch cup, really. I'm showing you on the camera there. See just how much webbing there is there. Not a lot of um, bush on it, a bit too overkill for this. Got a nice fat bum on it. Getting it to go, I think the furthest in there I can do it. Just get this turned around so we can see. I won't be amazed if it does a runner on me. Channel brackets seem to do that to me. A lot of webbing to get through here. Can I get you to go down there? No idea where it is. Looked like it ran in. I didn't see it come up, up the edge, edges. It's not on the pot. I have to do a bit of a search for it now. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. It's just down here in the corner there. The fat foot there. I do move that. There it is. So we got it in without any real hassles. Got a right fat bum on it. No chance of a photograph, but that's all right. So that's pretty cool. I'm pleased with that. So next on the agenda, we have the Thai Golden Fringed. Can I say that? I've never tried to say this before. Ornithoctonus oratibilis, tibialis? I don't know. <laughs> I should have practiced that. I found out how somebody else said it. Anyway, um, so the setup for this, this is a burrowing species, no real disputing that. There's a burrow under here, this is sort of hollowed out under there. Then there's the, end, the main burrow I'm planning on hoping it's going to use, it's down there, it goes through there. A little bit hollow at the back there, opened up. The real, as you see, I've, I've made a, you see it's sort of steamy because it's I've got moisture down there, but that's the burrow there I've made, I'm hoping it's going to use. Um, so a bit of leaf litter, I don't know. If, It'd be really cool if it was a turret maker. 
is it? My uh, Melophis. Oh, I'm not going to say this. Oh, my Perinoculus choidatus has made a nice turret, and that's really cool. I'm going to show that in a video soon. So anyway, these are well, a Thai golden fringe. <laughs> that's what it is from. Just tranchlers. I always get some from them. Here it is, Little hairy fellow. Focus. It's not looking very gold and fringed at the moment. What is to come, I'm sure. Can we get him to go in here without disappearing down his burrow is the issue. Come to the moss and I can take a photo, please. it gently. Maybe it's me without disturbing you. Yeah. Oh, what a, what a little angel he was. Obviously it's just a little brown sting at the moment, but we'll see if we can get a close-up photo just to see what it looks like. And there we are. Ever so well behaved. <laughs> just trotted out, didn't run off or anything. There it is. Hope, hope he likes his new home. We shall see. Right, basically I had a bit of an emergency last week. Um, because the temperature was dropping so much, it was minus four outside. Um, I was really struggling to keep the heating up in here. I've got an oil field radiator, um, the 11 fin, big one. And it, it just wasn't up to it. And uh, then I had a fanny to go in as well. I've got quite a lot of heat mats and things going in here. So I, there's a lot of things going off in here, but the heat, the fan heater blew the heating fuse, blew, blew the whole fuse for the garage in the middle of the night. I didn't know about it. So in the morning, um, where I take my temperature from was down to 10 and a half degrees. And as far as I know, actually things have survived, but it was a bit hair raising. And I spent um, the next day, no, it was, it was Wednesday night. I spent Thursday in a sort of emergency, um, emergency mode. That's how I divided off the garage, which made a big difference. I did actually put a false ceiling up just above the tranchlers, which was insulated. Um, that's made a big difference. So I managed to get the temperature sorted out, but it's, it's sort of temporary. So I'm going to be busy tonight doing it properly, insulating the ceiling properly. I'll probably put the false ceiling back in because it creates like a heat pocket just around the tranchlers for now. But we'll see. I might not need that once the whole thing's insulated. And then I've divided it off and I'm going to do that better as well. That's it. Yeah. So eventually I'll be able to do a winter, well I do a winter setup every video every year I've seen, but I'll do a proper winter video setup which shows how to keep your transfers in the garage warm um, successfully. I did it last year but I wasn't, I didn't have all the open tanks last year, they were all in, in this cabinet behind me or in the ant one that I'm propping the camera off. So yeah, maybe I'll be able to do a full collection tour at some point when I'm confident and I've got a, a good setup to show basically. But yeah, okay, thanks for watching.